tangled mangrove forest on the Bay of Bengal is the kingdom of a creature rarely seen by humans. One of the most efficient predators on Earth, this animal is feared as a killer and a man-eater. The legendary Swamp Tiger. These tigers are so elusive that all attempts to track them in these impenetrable swamps ended in failure. Two years ago, cameraman Mike Hurd captured the swamp tiger on film for the first time. It was an extraordinary breakthrough, the first glimpse into the secret life of the least known tiger in the world. The swamp tiger of the Bangladeshi Sundarbans. This first tiger footage was tantalizing and all too brief. But for Mike, it was enough to stir a passion. He resolved to return and unravel the secrets of this mysterious creature. The tigers have never been filmed here before, and I knew that it could be done. I'd gone so far along the road to getting the tigers, and then we just ran out of time. I haven't filmed in mangrove forest before, and it's just such a fantastic place to actually see these amazing animals walking around in these forests. That's what appealed to me, and that's what I really wanted to see. The Sundarbans are remote and dangerous. Mike will need an armed guard day and night. Somewhere in these 6,000 square miles, 10,000 square kilometers, are a few hundred tigers, yet the only way to track them is on foot. We've just been following these tracks along here. I don't know how old they are, but here's some tiger feces. And I don't know how fresh it is. You can get a stick and give it a poke. Mm, it's pretty old. Yeah. Quite old. The team will be here for the next six months. Rubai Mansour knows the area intimately. He's been bringing small parties of naturalists here since he was a child. Without his help, finding the tigers in this labyrinth would be impossible. Yes, hello, Master Saheb. Hello. Rubai makes sure their floating mobile home, the Al Buddha, keeps as close as possible. For safety, it must never be out of radio contact. The nearest settlement is over a day away. Four mighty rivers rise in the Himalayas and pass through Bangladesh, dividing into small streams and channels to pour into the sea in the Bay of Bengal. They form an intricate mangrove delta, a collection of sandbanks and mud held together by tangled roots. Floodwaters carry human victims downstream. Corpses are washed onto the muddy banks of the Sundarbans, giving some tigers the taste for human flesh. Every year, up to a hundred people are killed by tigers. Yet for the poor, there is no alternative. These fishermen spend months on board their boats, trying to avoid the bandits who steal their catch and their belongings. They practice an ancient fishing technique. Trained otters drive the fish into their nets so that the men can haul them up. Controlled by a simple harness, they force the fish from their hiding places in the reeds and into open water. The otters are awarded with their own fish meal from time to time.
As they chew the fish, they flick them from one side of their mouths to the other to keep a firm grip while still swimming. They make a good living. On the muddy bank, the first telltale trace of the tiger, a recent set of pug marks leading deep into the forest. Then more evidence, huge claw marks on a tree. I think it's a jumping up on here, the scratch marks. You can see the mud where they've been standing. Amazing. They're walking all the way along here. Mm. The air is thick with the pungent smell of tiger. Mike believes it must be a tigress, and the set of muddy prints confirm she is still very close. My Female tiger. Female tiger. Trying to track a tiger and film it on foot would be very dangerous, probably impossible. Mike's best chance is to base himself in a likely location and wait for the tiger to come to him. Building a safe hide 10 feet up in the air is the next step. He will spend up to 48 hours at a time here, and he can't risk being seen. Tigers have eyesight six times better than humans. Need lots of this, because we're so close to the tigers, we need lots of this mesh so that they don't see my face. An adult tiger measures nine feet, about three meters, from head to tail. Jumping up to Mike in his hide would be very possible, and some of these giants are said to relish human flesh. Mike has his own way to defend himself. If they do try to get up here, I've got this, which is my starting pistol, and all it does is it makes a very big loud noise. And I've also got a marine flare that will scare off anything. From now on, he's on his own. The rest of the team will wait offshore in the boat. The hide offers a clear view into the magical forest. Now ruled by the tiger, at one time it was filled with buffalo, Indian bison and rhino. They were hunted out by shooting parties a hundred years ago. But some animals still thrive in this watery jungle. Red-faced macaque monkeys watch over their youngsters as they play at eating leaves and fruits. As the infants reach sexual maturity, their faces will redden too. Still relying on mother's milk, the baby picks fruit and drops it to the forest floor. Perhaps he is just copying what the adults do. Living in large family troops of 20 to 30 animals, they form a tight clannish community. Grooming each other is reassuring and reaffirms their close family bonds. High in the trees, these youngsters will grow up in relative safety. With their keen senses and deft movements, they are rarely prey for the tiger. But the messy eating habits of the macaques, chewing bits of kiora leaf and then discarding them, make them vital companions for the favorite tiger victim, the spotted deer or cheetah. Licking off insects and moisture first, the macaques send a constant rain of debris to the forest floor. Deer will seek out macaques from up to 70 yards, 60 meters away, and follow them all day. Kiora leaves are also the main diet of the spotted deer, so keeping the macaques in their sights means they will be well fed without any effort on their part. A troop this size will drop over a ton of leaves in the course of a year. It appears a relaxed relationship, 
but monkeys and deer live in constant fear of the tiger. In fact, the monkeys provide an even more crucial service for the deer. The keen-eyed macaques are ever alert to the presence of the tiger and will screech out a warning whenever it comes near. Spotted deer are ideal prey for the tiger, so the deer stay close to the monkeys, following them for hours on end. The deer have learned to make do. Outside the mangrove forest, they prefer eating grass. Reaching the leaves can be hard work, and after a time, all the easier pickings have been taken. The males at least can stretch that far on their hind legs. The females cannot compete and only get in the way. They're moved on with a gentle nudge. The trees are meticulously trimmed to the level the deer can reach. But this is strenuous work and the rewards are slim. Better to rely on following the trail of the monkeys, especially if you're small. Having found a leaf, this fawn finds it not quite to its taste. It still hasn't been weaned and mother's milk is sweeter. Keeping one ear alert to the warning cry of the macaques, mother relies not only on the leaves discarded by the monkeys, but also food washed in by the tide and trapped by the mangrove roots. The Sundarbans is a constantly changing world. Mud-laden floodwaters enter the delta and mix with the tides that bathe the roots of the mangroves twice a day. Saturated with topsoil dragged from the Himalayas and fields along the way, the floodwaters are slowed and the mud settles. As the tides recede, it builds up in the gnarled roots and slowly forms a new forest floor. Along the coast, the constant flooding also causes great damage. Mud is washed away from the roots of the trees and they lose their tenuous grip. Old forest dies and becomes a graveyard. To survive here, animals have to adapt to every change. With plenty of prey around, Mike had expected to find evidence of the tiger, but he was disappointed, and it's time to move on. The team are moving deeper into the jungle. The mangrove roots pierce the cloying mud in search of air. The mud is unpleasant and sticky, but it reveals new evidence. It has captured a deep imprint of a tiger, fresh pug marks which must have been made just minutes ago. This is actually a really, really nice place. It's, it's what I've been looking for. It's really good. It's got all these aerial roots, this says uh, Sundarbans, um, and there was a tiger here. A new hide is built and concealed by palms. Mike is expecting a long wait, but he's taken by surprise. Through the trees, two weeks after arriving in the Sundarbans, 
Mike catches his first glimpse of the creature he is trying so hard to understand. I spent the whole night in the, in the hide and I could hear them feeding. I could hear the, the bones cracking. So I knew the tigers were around. tiger coming out of the forest and it was all wet and dirty looking and it looked like it just crossed a creek but it was amazing to see it because I'd heard it during the night and it looked very very scared it was uh, incredibly apprehensive but maybe that was because it was on its own so there must have been another tiger around I guess the cub was probably about eight or nine months old. And then there were two. And I thought, well, that makes sense because a cub this size wouldn't be on its own. But if there are two cubs, where is mother? The two young cubs hang around nervously for some 30 minutes, alone in the open forest. It was obvious that the cubs were from the same family because cubs from different family groups wouldn't tolerate each other. They must have been siblings um, because I couldn't tell them apart stripes were so similar. They did seem to be waiting for something. And then I could see Mum just looking at me through the trees. And again, she was quite apprehensive, but she came into the, into the clearing and sat down. But she watched me all this time, and although the cubs were uh, walking around, I had to be really careful and, and not move the, the lens too quickly in case I scared them off. One cub came up and nuzzled Mum. And then, incredibly, two more appeared. And there were three altogether. It's absolutely extraordinary. A female tiger with three cubs, only 30 metres away in this forest. And I realised that this is a family of four. That's absolutely amazing. Mike was the first person in the world ever to film a Sundarbans tiger. Now he films four of them all at once. To perfect his view of the tigers and better observe their behavior, Mike looks out of sight for another hide in a parallel channel. The, the middle mm -hmm. of the hide should be directly in line with, with me here. Okay? Okay. He's going to try out an idea he's been thinking about for a while. He's going to put a hide right in the water. That way his chances of seeing the tiger in the open will be greatly increased. No one has tried this before, but Mike has spent so long working out how this special tiger operates, he reckons he will have a good chance of filming them from here. All the bamboos and planks for the sturdy tower or machan had to be brought here by boat. Since this hide sits quite low, Mike will be vulnerable, so the hide is virtually a cage. The local team are amazed. Smiling at Ali, he's saying that when first time we built a chance, it took us four planks, four bamboos. Now it takes 20 planks, 50 bamboos. And a cage. Yeah. 
It's secure and once clothed in greenery looks well disguised. But the tigers would almost certainly be aware of Mike's presence. Their sense of smell is acute. Once he begins, Mike will be on his own for many long hours. And once the tigers turn up, he will be unable to get out of the hide until they leave the scene. The view is different and distinctive. Mike's first visitor is a brilliantly colored jungle fowl, ancestor of the domestic chicken. It searches for insects through the roots, its feathers iridescent against the gray sludge. There are no tigers, but all around are birds, such as the golden-backed woodpecker and the curious racket-tailed drongo. As well as deer and the occasional monkey, wild boar are also food for tigers. In exchange for a ride, the jungle crows groom the boar, who seem deceptively docile. But boar feed on deer too, and will attack and bring down live animals. A mother with cubs to feed will hunt at any time, day or night. Each time the cubs move away from their mother or come back from an exploratory trip, they exchange reassuring nuzzles. Sometimes they will follow her, but not tonight. With four mouths to feed, she needs to make a kill every two or three days. On her own, she could survive for a week. One of the most successful predators on Earth, the tiger moves without a sound. It relies completely on stealth. A successful hunt depends on getting close enough to take its prey by surprise. Strong swimmers, Sundaban's tigers have been known to take their victims in the water. The deer rush frantically, perhaps aware that a tiger is about. But how can they know where the attack will come from? In the dawn light, a baby deer pines for its mother. The smell of death attracts two thieves to her corpse. The tigress has gone to collect her cubs, and the deer carcass has been found by hungry scavengers. Still warm, her flesh is firm and spongy. The tiger and her cubs would feed on this carcass for several days. Decayed flesh is to their taste and easier to tear apart. 
The tiger and her cubs would feed on this carcass for several days. Decayed flesh is to their taste and easier to tear apart. Defeated by the fresh carcass, the young boar sidles around its mother to find a way in. The soft rump is perfect. The tigress arrives ahead of her cubs, protectively cautious. She needs to give the greedy wild boar no warning. Not even they would challenge the swamp tiger. Just her presence arouses fear. She chased off the wild boar and the cubs were not far behind. But this is really, really amazing because my hide is the lowest it's, it's been so far, just above the water. And she could smell me. The bold location of the second hide has paid off. But I think that she was getting used to my smell. She was actually getting used to me being there. Although she didn't like me being there, she was actually quite, quite okay about it. Today, her cubs will have full bellies, but raising three growing tigers to maturity will take over two years. They still need their mother. It will be another eight months before they can hunt their own food. By that time, she will be exhausted. The cubs are now playful. They need to feed often, but their appetites are quickly satisfied. She was growling away, and I could see that she, she wasn't really that happy with me being there. She was just tolerating my presence. She was definitely reacting to, to me being there. While she was growling, um, I was pleased to see that she was distracted by something in the trees, probably a bird. I suppose if she was really determined, she could have run the 25 meters or so to the hide. But I never really thought she would do that. And then she went off down to the creek and had a drink. People have thought that tigers do drink um, the brackish waters in the creek, but nobody's actually seen that before. Legend has it that drinking salt water altered these tigers' metabolism and turned them into man-eaters, a theory that's never been proven. In three or four days' time, this mother will need to kill again, but the pressure on her hunting skill will eventually force the cubs to try hunting alone. Suddenly, something Mike hasn't bargained for. A much bigger tiger appears at the kill. He has no idea what might happen. It was a male, and I felt a bit vulnerable. I thought that it must have been a male known to the female because she, there was no reaction. She was very relaxed about this male coming in. Taking their cue from their mother, the cubs hang back and watch. In fact, it may well have been the territorial male or a very close relative of the female. If that had been a male that she wasn't used to, the cubs would have run off and she would have stood her ground. Rogue males, outsiders, could even kill cubs to bring the mother back into season. This male is clearly no threat. Only a close blood relative would be tolerated at the family meal table. Could this tiger be the father of her cubs?
Mike Hurd is due to leave the Sundarbans for a month. The first stage of his filming has been more successful than he could ever have imagined. It's been an amazing place, absolutely amazing. What have you seen? Five tigers. <laughs> Just amazing. Separately or were they all together? Or? All together, yeah. one family, a female and three cubs. Wow. All together. With tiger numbers like this, it's no wonder local fishermen are fearful. There could be more tigers here than anyone has ever imagined. Despite the dangers, the poor from the north have no choice but to come here. At dawn each day, women trawl for shrimps, defenseless in the shallow water against the tiger. There have been 13 reported deaths in the last few months, and many attacks go unreported. Despite up to 100 people being killed by tigers each year, the landless poor pursue the riches of the Sundarbans season after season. Perilous for humans, the rich debris-filled water makes this a flourishing nursery for fish and a paradise for birds. Fish fleeing from underwater predators are an easy target for egrets. The paddy bird has to work harder to catch shrimps. The rare masked finfoot is a mangrove specialist, superbly adapted to catching crabs. The macaques have adapted well to this unique and dangerous world. Watching its mother closely, the baby decides to try the same dish. The macaques have learned to harvest the fruits of the mud banks, seeking out the most delicate of mangrove seed pods with uncanny skill. Living in a muddy world seems to have made the macaques especially fastidious. The pod is highly nutritious and full of protein. Even though the spotted deer can run faster than the tiger, drinking at the waterside makes them very vulnerable. If caught by surprise, they must swim. And tigers are quicker swimmers. It's the one time the macaques need to be on their guard. Wild otters, a different species from those corralled by the fishermen, bark out a warning. Perhaps they can smell a hungry tiger. They retreat to the relative safety of the creek. The Sundarbans are a series of ever-shifting islands, and to survive here, all of the animals must be able to swim or fly from danger. The tiger is king here. In January, the team returns to set up their next hide. 
Mike's confident he will film his family of four again. I saw her this morning crossing a, a stream with uh, the three cubs. And they're heading this way, so we just we don't want to lose her now. We've got two different locations with the same family in it. It's looking really good. There are rumors of poachers or bandits in the area. Mike is worried. He can probably protect himself from tigers. Humans are more dangerous, and this hide leaves him very exposed. What was that? Did anybody hear that? Yeah? I don't know, it wasn't me, was it you, you know? They are unsure who is shooting at them, but they know there are tiger poachers in the Sundarbans and also illegal loggers and bandits. Obviously, the presence of a film team for months at a time is inconvenient. In the end, they decide to make a quick exit. It was unmistakably a warning. You said tigers are dangerous! At all times, the team has been accompanied by an armed guard as a safety precaution. But a show of strength the next day seems imperative. The hide has been wrecked. They've stolen planks and will cause more delay. Somebody's come and stolen some of the planks on the, on the train, but... Huh? Uh, two steps forward, three steps back. A red flag above the hide is set up as a crude warning. And Mike goes back to work in spite of the danger. At this stage, Mike is convinced he has sighted the mother and three cubs again. The question is, can he get the cameras in the right place a second time? A colony of huge water monitor lizards, some of them nine feet or almost three meters long, have taken up residence on the beach. A huge male is on guard. There is a rigid pecking order, and he is at the top. Another male wants to challenge him, but how welcome is he likely to be? He'll have to fight the dominant male to get a foothold here. These lizards have razor-sharp jaws, but the aim seems to be to squeeze each other into submission. These reptilian giants are extremely strong with powerful leg muscles. They can easily outrun a human. Their tussles are more ritual than territorial. One of the tactics is to wrestle the opponent to the ground. They are fairly well matched. Inflating of the throat and body is designed to intimidate their rival. Other monitor lizards already know their place and keep their distance. The newcomer has had just about enough. He's on the lookout for a quick getaway. No one else wants to take up the challenge, it seems. The fight is over, and the resident male keeps his status intact. But the defeated intruder survives unharmed to try his luck elsewhere. Surprisingly soon, Mike's tigers have turned up again. Mother and three cubs. As the season wears on, the intensity of the heat becomes almost unbearable. 
The monsoon is now just two months away, but the humidity makes everyone uncomfortable. Now almost fully grown, these cubs will have to make their own way soon, alone. In preparation, the cubs are becoming bolder, spending more time exploring the area away from their resting site. As yet, they are not taking risks. One of the cubs got a bit of a shock when it sniffed a tree. I think there must have been some scent left from another tiger. They still seem deeply involved with their mother, signaling each time they wander off and return. The long middle of the day stretches out for eight hot hours. The temperatures reach more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or 40 Celsius, with 95% humidity. Tigers don't sweat, but panting helps them keep their bodies in equilibrium. Every hide I made I always felt that I was getting closer and closer to the tigers. But this was the closest yet. When I was that close, I could hear them panting in the heat. They were having a job keeping their, their temperature down. As I was filming, a jet flew over, and just so typical of these animals, anything that moves or makes a sound has to be checked out. Being so close to this family makes Mike question their identity. I could also get a clearer view of the markings of this female. And they were definitely different to the other animals I'd filmed. It was then I realized that there were in fact two females with two different sets of cubs. On the side of her face, a distinctive cross pattern tells Mike that what he's beginning to suspect is right. This is another female, with another set of three cubs. The previous mother had totally different facial markings. Mike realizes that the cubs belonging to the first mother were smaller, and he now knows he has filmed two families living next to each other on either side of a small creek. It is totally unexpected. Yet the markings on this new female's face make it impossible to ignore. Her cubs are several months older, probably aged over a year. No wonder they spend more time away from their mother. Catching hold of each other's heels, they are already practicing to hunt alone. The first rains come early, clearing the air but adding to the humidity and lowering the temperature by a few degrees. Keen to follow the new family, Mike is unable to get to the hide. Once the rain set in for good, it will be time to leave the Sundarbans. The jungle will turn into an impenetrable swamp and become dangerous as the swirling monsoon waters pour through the channels to the bay. At that time, no one dares come here. Soon the cubs must leave their mother, and they are now hunting with her every day. 
Learning to catch their own food is now a priority. It's not going to be easy. They must get within 20 yards of the deer before making their final attack. And the deer are alert. Success depends on patience and cunning. Foot stamping and upright tail show that the deer are aware of the tiger. The male cub is very determined. As yet, they don't know which direction he's coming from. Mother keeps a close eye. If he makes a wrong move, she will step in. Seeing her chance, the big tigress begins her final stalk. But the youngster has blown it. He's in too much of a hurry. He couldn't wait. There's nothing his mother can do now. But the cub must learn fast. Soon he will be on his own. He doesn't seem to understand quite how the deer got away. Soon she will give up feeding them and the cubs will find their own way or not survive. The females may stay quite near their mother's territory, but the young male will eventually move far away from here. In 18 months' time, she will have another litter to raise. Both females have proven to be skilled mothers. Two thriving families so close to one another is remarkable, not only because of their mother's skill, but evidence too of a strong protective male. He has probably sired all six cubs. Well, this is by far the most difficult expedition I've ever had. I understood just how hostile the Sundarbans could be to human beings. Perhaps that's made them the most vital sanctuary on Earth, a refuge for the most thriving population of tigers on the planet maybe even the last. When I left the Sundarbans this time, I had a stronger attachment to this place than I've ever felt anywhere else, and especially to the tigers. There is still so much to learn about these tigers here that I'm sure I'll be back. The Bangladeshi Sundarbans, an alien world for humans, the perfect haven for the most successful tiger population in the world. place where the tiger is still king of the jungle. The Sundarbans forest that borders Bangladesh and India. This vast mangrove forest is a last stronghold for the endangered Bengal tiger. It's also a place where these beautiful big cats have a terrible reputation. 
some have developed a taste for human flesh. In bad years, over 50 people are killed and many injured. There's growing fear and hostility. Tiger scientists in Bangladesh are desperate to prevent further bloodshed. But if a solution can't be found, the tiger's days will be numbered. One village has a bold plan to train street dogs to protect them from the man-eating tiger on their doorstep. But will these mongrels be any match for the biggest of the big cats? A man-eating tiger has struck again. A fisherman has been killed and his friends want to retrieve his body from the forest. As the tiger could still be guarding the corpse, it's a very risky thing to do. Tiger biologist Adam Barlow and his forest department team want the group to turn back. I'm going to tell you that our friend is very good. But I'm going to tell you that I'm 100% sure Adam's an expert on the man-eating tigers of the Sundarbans and knows these people are playing with fire. We try to persuade them not to go in there. This is a very bad idea, but they're going to go in anyway. And we're going to try and help them a little bit, make it a bit safe for them. Um, but this is really not uh, a safe situation. Adam's worked with tigers in Asia for over eight years, but he's never known man-eating to be as bad as it is here in Bangladesh. Lots of tiger tracks uh, here. We're very close to the spot where this man was killed. Now I'm going to try and organize things so it's a bit safer. Egg minute, egg minute, OK. <laughs> Adam gives the dead man's friends some critical safety advice before they enter the tiger's territory. So, I'm going to watch it. Petri, Jaite Shamoi, Abna Ekta Bondu Shate, Shop Shamoi Ekta Bondu. And he Jodi Pag Asti Se, and he Rag Asti, running na, and he Joker Jok, Joker Jok, and he Lati, okay? And he Ekta Mushobdo, and he Aro Manush Ashpe. Tika Se. After a lethal bite to the man's neck or throat, the tiger would have dragged the victim into dense forest. The man's body is large enough to provide meals for several days. There's some blood from the tiger victim. Very fresh still. Still wet. Still following the blood trail. They found a bit of cloth from the man's clothing that was uh, the guy that was killed. The fisherman's mutilated body has been found. The tiger hasn't finished its meal. We've got the, just got the body, we're just coming out of the jungle. Uh, the tiger didn't attack us on the way out, which was really good. And now they're going to transport the body back to the village for a proper burial. Before they leave the area, there's something they must do. Material from the dead man's shirt 
will be a warning to anyone else. Their mission's accomplished, but they leave heavy-hearted. The Sundarbans is the largest mangrove forest in the world. Six times the size of Greater London, it's a tidal jungle that's been created where the Ganges and Brahmaputra rivers enter the Bay of Bengal. It's hostile to humans, but the delta is rich and diverse in wildlife and a sanctuary for 400 or so Bengal tigers. Throughout Asia and the Russian Far East, tigers are on the brink of extinction. The Sundarbans is one of the largest tracts of wilderness left in their range. Tigers are usually frightened of people, but not here. Many of these animals are known to be habitual man-eaters. Adam and the Forest Department's Tiger Response Team are battling to save an endangered big cat while also struggling to keep local people safe. The tigers making their job increasingly difficult because it's no longer just the people working inside the forest who are at risk from attack. Tigers can easily cross rivers. They're excellent swimmers. And some are venturing into villages that border the forest. For over a year, the residents of Chanpai, on the northeast edge of the forest, have been terrorized by a predatory tiger. For many months, it killed livestock and dogs, but one night, it took its first human victim. Adams come to Chanpai with fellow tiger scientist Monirul Khan to piece together what happened. Someone is here. Krishna Bodo is the son of the woman who died. senseless <laughs> আমরা মারে নিয়ে ঘরে গেলে পরে আমার গ্রাম্য লোকজন কেউ আমার কাছে আসতে পারতেছে না কেন না ভয় সারা বাড়ি বাদ তারপরে কি সময় পরে কিছু লোকজন আসলো এসে দেখা গেল যে মা চারটে তিরিশের দিকে আমার মা শেষ নিঃশ্বাস পরিত্যাগ করলেন Looking at this wall, it looks quite substantial to us, but it's pretty flimsy for a tiger and no more than some vegetation it might see in the jungle. And it sends the woman in there, punched a hole through and grabbed the woman out. Um, the tragic thing and the surprising thing is, is that um, from this vantage point, you can see a whole load of cows over there. So the tigers come here. It's got the choice. There's some cows over there. There's, some old, there's an old lady in there. I'm going to get the old lady. Uh, that means that this tiger is probably very bold, dangerous, 
and this is the tiger we uh, really want to deal with and uh, lessen the chance of this happening again. This tiger is clearly no longer afraid of people and the villagers now fear for their lives. No one really knows why tigers become man-eaters. Old, sick or injured tigers may find killing humans easier than animal prey. Perhaps some tigers have added people to their diet after feeding on the victims of devastating cyclones. What's clear is that for Sundarbans tigers, eating humans can become a habit. So the Chunpai tiger must be stopped in its tracks. On the forest side of the river, Adam discovers just how close it's coming to the village. We have some tiger tracks here. This is a pretty normal thing. We're in the Sundarbans. Uh, the trouble is, uh, we're also right next to a village. And this tiger might be the very tiger that's crossing this, into this village and killing livestock and killing one old lady. Uh, the villagers are pretty frightened. Uh, over 60 animals have been killed. And if we don't sort out this problem soon, we're going to have more livestock loss, more possible human tragedy, and nearly definitely a dead tiger. There are so few tigers left in the wild that each one is precious. They are legally protected in Bangladesh. But it's hard to persuade local people of this tiger's value when it's causing so much tragedy. It's a complex problem. But Monirul has come up with a simple and radical solution. Village dogs. They're lowly mongrels, but Monirul thinks they could be trained up, not only to warn people of an approaching tiger, but also to scare it away for good. Do you want to be a tiger hound? In order to test his idea out, Monorul needs the help of a professional. Marielle Schmidt is a dog trainer from the United States, who's volunteered to come to Chanpai to see if she can help make Monorul's idea work. Hello. You must be Marielle. Hi, Hi. Monorul. Nice to meet Welcome you. To Thank you. Thanks for coming. If we can use these dogs to spot the tiger or to chase it back to the forest, that's a very good solution. Yeah, I, I look forward to meeting the local dogs and seeing what they're like to work with. They're probably fairly different than what I've worked with at home. Just be careful what you're asking. At home in Montana, Marielle runs general obedience classes but she also specializes in training guard dogs. In America, certain breeds are already used to frighten bears away from people. But no one's tried pitting street dogs against a tiger. Bangladeshi dogs are treated like pests, not pets, and are fearful of everything. Oh, yeah, that one's a little shy for what we need. Yeah. It's a little skinny, too. Yeah. Marielle has just three weeks to see if she can transform them into obedient tiger hounds. Adam, meanwhile, is trying to control the immediate crisis. He knows the Champai tiger might strike again at any time. Adam and his team will offer the villagers advice and support if there's further tiger trouble. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
They post stickers around the village to publicize their Tiger helpline. Uh, we're going around now for all the mobile phone shops. This is the main place where everyone goes. If someone uh, hasn't got a mobile phone, they're going to go there and see that sticker. Someone calls a number, um, and if there's a tiger in the village, then we're going to rush to that spot and try and uh, stop chaos uh, happening, stop people being killed by tiger, stop the tiger being killed. If the village dogs are to help long term, Monirul and Marielle first need to find out whether any of them have hidden talent. The villagers of Chanpai have been invited to a dog audition in the school playground. The motley crew that turn up aren't the pedigree breeds Marielle's used to working with. <laughs> I can see right away that this this one's not going to work out for us. No, he's too too afraid. Um, no, when they when they uh, won't eat meat, they're too afraid to, to work with. So, thank you. Yeah, no score. No, thank you. Where's the rope for this dog? Get the dog out of here. Get that dog on a rope or out of here. No, no, no. Get him. Get him. It's a bit of a crazy situation here with lots of uh, lots of people and dogs and activity and when you bring them in close proximity it's not un uncommon to have some tensions. This uh, dog is stiff and resistant, fearful, submissive but fearful. Not going to work out for this one. Will there be any candidates? So his name is Sheik and uh, he's two years old. Okay. I'm going to bang this and it may startle him and then I want to see how he recovers or how he reacts to it. Okay. Not too bad. Oh, right back. Good boy. Good boy. He's, he's brave yeah. and um, fairly dominant as we saw from his behavior with other dogs, which could be a little problematic. Let's give him a uh, six. with the females because they spend much of their life here raising puppies or being in heat and uh, that could be distracting for the boys in the pack so probably it's best to stick with males for the pack work thank you we'll let her go take care of her puppies so no score no score hello good boy oh this is nice he's much more responsive willing to take it from my hand the first time did you eat that good boy Careful. Just one, one at a time. Okay. So let's try it. Okay, okay, okay. I kind of expected that. Don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. His name is Bullet. Bullet. Okay. <laughs> He's the first one that's been quite aggressive taking the food from my hand, which is not necessarily a bad thing. He would need to learn respect. He's a little jumpy around his head sometimes, a little nervous about being touched back there, um, but that can be a, a, a bit of a dominance trait too. Okay, I like him. I give him my highest score. We'll give him a seven. Okay, that's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. So this is the Good highest boy. score. So, yep, highest score so far. At last, a handful of dogs with some talent, but they're still a long way from creating a canine defense force. There's mounting pressure on Adam to build up a profile of the Chun Pai serial killer so he can work out how to deal with it. It's not a job for the faint hearted. I'm a little bit nervous. Normally, a tiger is afraid of humans, but this tiger's gotten over that fear and now it's trying to kill cattle, it's starting to kill even one person. And the, the forest is so dense that I could come across this tiger and I'm not going to see it until it's like two meters away. We've got some bear spray, we've got uh, forest guards, we've got a knife, and uh, hopefully the tiger is going to hear me coming before it's too late. Uh, so we've got to rely on a bit of experience and hopefully uh, the tiger uh, doesn't fancy uh, attacking me today. Tiger tracks, uh, a few days old. Probably now, I don't really know, it's a little bit messed up. But heading this way, heading towards the village. I'm gonna see where they go. Its gender is significant. 
A female may have hungry cubs to feed. If she's a man-eater, her cubs may also develop the taste for human flesh. A male tiger patrols a territory four times larger than a female's, so he will have different hunting patterns. Just knowing this will help Adam decide how to best protect the village. It's the first day of the tiger hound training. The chosen dogs and their owners make their way from Chan Pai and neighboring villages to Mariel's training ground. Eight dogs were selected from the dog audition. Mariel now needs to turn them into a well-behaved pack. Hey, it looks like it's going to be interesting here. A lot of uh, growling and attitude already. So, hope we can keep the peace. <laughs> okay, maybe backwards. Congratulations, you are all now tiger hounds in training. They've been selected for a very important job to help protect you and the people of your village from tigers. Marielle starts off by giving the dogs vaccinations, new leashes, and collars. I got an extra large collar for B2. We have Sheik the troublemaker, Loudmouth, who always seems to lose his collar and leash. So hopefully we can keep this one on him. It goes uh, between his shoulder blades right on his skin. He's a little excited about the meat. Pull it, the okay. star of the audition, is bounding with enthusiasm. While Bitu's reluctant to follow orders. Good. Mariel's first challenge is to get the dogs to cooperate with her. But her real problem will be to get the dogs to cooperate with each other. We have a lot of uh, very strong dogs here and all, all males and that's uh, a setup for a lot of uh, aggression amongst them. But we're hoping to save that aggression for the tigers. Too close. Okay, too close. Barely an hour passes before the first casualty. B2 slipped his collar and attacked some. He's got a pretty nasty looking wound in his hawk. Good boy. <laughs> Som's going to have to be retired from the training at least for a couple of days, and we'll see how this is uh, going. It should either be getting much better or it may be getting infected. If the dogs can't work together, they'll never have the strength in numbers they need to stand up to a tiger. Som's injury is a measure of how antisocial these local dogs are. The dogs selected by Marielle are all alpha males. To survive, they've had to look out for themselves. But as loners, they've made themselves vulnerable. Tigers will eat whatever they can catch. As top predator here, they play a vital role in keeping the forest wildlife balanced and varied. So why has the Champai tiger turned its back on its natural prey and begun to eat domestic animals and people instead? In the forest near the village, Adam makes a discovery that may explain why the Chanpai tiger has become so bold. This is uh, cattle tracks. This means that from the village, cows are crossing over and grazing here. Uh, this might be part of the problem. If a tiger sees cattle a lot, uh, it's going to get used to it, start eating it. Maybe overcome some of its fear of things associated with, with uh, people. All over the place, just cattle. I just can't believe how many tracks there are here. Uh, if I'm a tiger and I'm hungry, I see a big fat cow wandering around, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it after a while. Sometime during the night, the tiger will be walking close by to here. And at some stage, it's gonna make a choice. Does it go? Does it stay in the forest? Does it go into the village? Take some easy pickings from the cattle in there. But Adam and his team are finding further reasons for the growing tiger problem. Mm -hmm. 
As the villages that lie close to the Sundarbans expand, wood and other forest resources are being used up. People are also illegally poaching deer, the tiger's favorite wild prey. Many villagers realize the tiger's going hungry. Right up next to the village, there's tiger track. There's one tiger track right here. Uh, maybe it crossed at some stage. Um, hopefully, it didn't cause any trouble. We're going to follow these tracks a little bit further, see where it went. Even if the villagers stop grazing their cattle in the forest and poaching deer, it may be too late to reverse the eating habits of the Junpai tiger. It must be stopped from coming to the village. Good boy, Shake. That a boy, ready? Shake heel. Good heel. Good boy. It was a slow start, but now the tiger hounds are getting the hang of things. Good. Som's leg is on the mend, and it looks like he can rejoin the team. Good, it looks very good. I think he's just about back to new. Okay, Som. Marielle needs as many dogs as she can get. Good sit. Give it to him. Good sit. After just a few days, the dogs are becoming more responsive. It can take them a while. Make sure that they say good stay when the dog's holding it. Especially this may seem a far cry from tiger chasing, but absolute obedience is vital if the dogs are to be focused on the job. One dog in particular has shot to the top of the class. Well, Bullet's kind of our star pupil so far. He's progressing very quickly, and that's a, from a combination of a trainable temperament and, a, and an effective handler who's done a good job of learning the cues and, and having good timing. So it's coming together nicely. Bullet shows strong leadership when Mariel introduces the dogs to their first tiger. They've yet to discover the difference between fake fur and the real thing. Lakshmi has been in another fight and has even worse injuries than before. Although the villagers live with tigers on their doorstep, few have ever seen one and know little about them. So Monirul, Mariel and Adam invite the whole village to the screening of a tiger film in the school playground. By appreciating the tiger better, maybe people will have second thoughts about killing it. There's a lot of persuading to do, because it's on a dark night like this that the Chanpai tiger strikes again. This time, it's only a goat. But Monirul knows, from eight years studying tigers, that the loss of just one animal can have a devastating impact on family fortunes. So there's a fresh pug mark over here. The edicte niye gatsa na jungle? So the tiger grabbed the goat from here and took into the forest, which is only a few meters away, and there is only a creek between the village and the forest. It's a big loss for him as he is a poor man and the goat was pregnant, so it's a very big loss for the family. Chan Pai is losing patience with this tiger. I'm going to call Adam and tell him about this tiger. Monirul wants Adam to track where this tiger went after making its kill. The tiger is now killing on a weekly basis. 
It may be a protected animal, but if it carries on like this, villagers will take the law into their own hands. Even Adam is surprised by its brazen behavior. Uh, Go was killed just over here, dragged by the tiger across this canal, walked through someone else's backyard, jumped from over here, right over here, uh, carried on over here. We're quite far from the jungle. Jumped over here and went into these open fields over there and headed back towards the jungle with the, with the uh, goat in its mouth. It's really uh, amazing to me how bold this tiger is. It's just wandering around, doesn't care that there's humans about. And reaching the riverbank, Adam finds the trails red hot. The tiger's been seen in the last hour. Sure. So he was actually on the other side of the canal. Maybe it was really close, I don't know. There's always some kind of crazy story around uh, tigers, but definitely there's some tracks over there. We're going to have a look right now. Really new tracks. These are about as fresh as they get. Uh, I think the, the boy story is true. The tiger was here and it's gone right in this bit of jungle. It's probably very close and there's no reason for us to go in there. So I'm just going to back out um, and keep keep safe. There's no, yeah, the tiger's in there. Let's go, let's go back. This is the closest Adam has ever come to the Chanpai tiger. It would have been hiding just meters away in the dense forest. It's way too close for comfort. The dogs are needed more than ever, but no one knows how they'll deal with a real threat. Monirul and Mariel have obtained special permission to introduce three of the dogs, Tom, Som and Bitu, to a captive zoo tiger. Oh, what a magnificent creature. Well, this will be really exciting to see what the dogs do. There's no doubt we'll get a, a reaction today. One by one, the dogs are taken to meet the tiger in its den. Good boy. There we go. Oh, we're right here. Okay. Look, Bit the goes first. There. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good tiger. Good boy. Good tiger. Good boy. That's it. But Bitu doesn't even make it into the enclosure. Good boy. I'm not going to push him to go any closer because that's obviously very scary for him. Good boy. Good boy, Tom. Good boy. Where's Tom's up next. Good Will boy. he be braver than Bitu? Good, good. Good, Tom. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That's the way, Tom. Good for you. Ooh, look at the tigers. We're going to watch out. Good boy. Good for you. Good boy. He got a little spooked there initially, but um, he held his ground surprisingly well, especially when the tigers had a pretty assertive response to him there. The tiger's last visitor is Som. Okay, I think Som's going to give us our strongest reaction yet, one way or the other. He's been more tuned into scent, which he's already picking up here nicely. Where's the tiger, Som? Where's the tiger? Good boy, Som. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Good tiger. Good boy. That a boy, Som. Good boy. That's pretty impressive. Stand up to that. Good boy. Good boy, Som. The next step is to see whether they gain strength in numbers. A pack of three head in together for a face-off with the tiger. Good, good boy. Good, good boy. Good, good boy. Good, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Tiger looks less sure, less sure of itself. There, the tiger's leaving. Okay, that's a different response we've seen. Good, 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 good
But brothers, Tom and Som, took heart from each other, showing that dogs that have grown up together work best as a pack. Talk with some good and a boy. Okay, let, let's move it out here. I don't want to think our point's been made here. Let's, let's head on out. Tom, Som, and Bitu's owners have a particular reason for wanting their dogs to protect them from tigers. They have one of the most dangerous jobs in Bangladesh. They are forest honey collectors. On April the 1st, they join other teams gathered from across the Sundarbans to wait for the official start of the honey collection season. Hundreds of boats race towards the forest to find the best honey spots. But not all these men will return. Last year, 20 honey collectors were killed by tigers. Monirul and Adam want to find ways of reducing the casualties. Tom, Som and Bittu's owners would also have liked their newly trained dogs on board, but domestic animals are currently not allowed in the forest. In the absence of dogs, they'll have to rely on spiritual protection. They will not venture into the forest until the gunin or shaman has performed his traditional ritual. Through his chanting and gestures, he contacts the spirits to find out whether this forest is safe to enter. <laughs> Honey is a precious commodity, but they will collect as much as they can in the shortest time possible. They are dicing with death. In dense forest, tigers wait silently and ambush their prey. We found the hive, and uh, now we're going to burn some leaves to smoke out the bees so they, they're not so aggressive. Collect some honey and go back to the boat. The smoke may make the bees less aggressive, but it reduces visibility to zero. It's now that the risk of tiger attack is highest. Monirul sees just how useful dogs could be. I think uh, dogs could make a big difference because it could smell the tiger when people are busy at work or when they smoke the honeycomb and perhaps would save their lives. Although it is not permitted now, but I hope in the future perhaps they will be able to use the dogs when they work. It's a dangerous job and for not really that much reward and they really run a risk of being attacked and, and quite a few of them are. So if there's any way we can make them a bit safer and we've got to try those, try those things. The Changpai street dogs were once treated like dirt, but now both handlers and their dogs have become local celebrities. Marielle even has her own fan club. Wow, a whole book. Thank you. Look at them all. Beautiful. Star status is all very well. But Monirul and Marielle want to show the village as a whole how the dogs might offer a bit more protection. It's my hope that in my short time that I've been here, I've been able to excite some people about the possibilities uh, that happen when we learn to communicate with our dogs. Where'd he go? Go, boy, where'd he go? Som has a fantastic nose for tiger scent. 
and has been trained to sit once he gets a whiff from one of the boxes. Yes, Sam! Yes, Sam! He doesn't let Marielle down. I think that's probably good, right? Okay. Okay! After the show, the Chun Pai pack assembles on a night patrol. If they smell a tiger, they'll alert the villagers and try to drive it back to the forest. In just a few weeks, they've been transformed from street dogs to tiger hounds and have given the local people some much needed courage and confidence in dealing with their problem tiger. But this is not the only big cat giving grief in the Sundarbans. The Tiger Response Team has learned, via their hotline, of a serious incident far to the west of Chunpai. The Tiger has entered a village and some people are injured and the Tiger is in fact dead. Uh, but we don't have much more information than that. We're on our way to find out. It's dark by the time Adam reaches the forest guard post where the dead tiger's body has been taken. It's a tragic sight to see such a magnificent and rare animal bludgeoned to death. We're now trying to weigh the tiger, trying to find out uh, how heavy it is. We don't know much about tigers in the Sundarbans, how big they are. Uh, and this is important information to see if this tiger is a uh, a little bit different to tigers living in other areas. Measurements from other tigers killed by people suggest that Sundarbans tigers may be much smaller than other Bengal tigers. Adam notes this tiger's identity, sex and age. We know it's a young female because of the condition of its teeth. The teeth are very new, very sharp and not worn in any way. It's got all its incisors, all its canines, I think it's probably about three years old. This young female was close to breeding age. Over the past century, tiger numbers worldwide have plummeted by 95%. And now there's one less tiger in the Sundarbans. Adam wants to find out more about how she died. But for that, He'll have to wait for daybreak. Back in Chan Pai, Marielle has just a couple of days left before she must return to the U.S. Great job, guys. That was uh, much better and more focused. Um, I'd like to see if we can get it even a little bit more. While the pack perfect their tiger driving skills, she has one final job to do. She'll have to choose one of the dog handlers to continue the training. One has exactly the skills and attitude she's looking for. Hey, hey, Good. Hey, it's Shubod, the owner of star dog Bullet. Hey, hey, if local people can show such resolve, then Adam won't have tragic missions like this. He travels to where the other tiger was killed and talks to the locals to build up a picture of what happened. This is the place where they first saw the tiger. About 20, 25 people came with sticks. It attacked one person. Then the tiger just shot off in this direction. We're gonna go and see the next scene of uh, what happened. Frightened and confused, the tiger would have lashed out in self-defense. This is the next place. The tiger paused again. We traveled about uh, 40 meters through the paddy fields. They shouted. They tried to get close to it, tried to scare it away. It attacked one. So again, the tiger paws. We've traveled about 15 meters. The same group of people. At the moment, the, there's just a small group of villagers. Right here, it attacked three people, injuring, biting, scratching. Uh, and again, it moved on, trying to, just trying to escape these angry villagers. Everyone is coming. Everyone from the uh, village is coming. Maybe more than a, one or 2,000 people. This is the last place that uh, the tiger attacked someone. 
and suddenly you come across the scene of a very violent and frightening confrontation. Yesterday at 11 o'clock, a tiger was right here, and there was maybe two or 3,000 villagers surrounding it, beating it to death with sticks. Why it happened was because people didn't know what to do. They were afraid, and, and they had no training in, in how to proceed. Um, we're going to change that. We're going to have teams that can respond to these incidents and know how to work around tigers, and know when to uh, intervene and when to just keep people separate from the tiger until it has a chance to go back to the jungle. Adam has a huge task ahead of him. But Marielle's work here is done. This is the end of our training together, and it's been a wonderful experience for me. I sure it's time for the dog pack to, to graduate. Dogs are capable of. Um, I've written up a training manual that uh, I will leave with you that's been translated so that you have the tools to continue the work after I go. <laughs> the dogs are still a trial study. But the villagers of Changpai have seen their potential. Long term, they'll need to breed the best qualities from their dogs. Som's superb scent detection. Bullet's courage and intelligence. Sheikh's aggressive attitude. Still. Packs could be formed in other villages bordering the forest. Sure enjoyed. Working with you, you're a fun dog to do all kinds of stuff with. And you, you lead them on into the future, okay, Bullet? Yes. Sire lots of future tiger hounds. Hopefully, Monirul's idea and Mariel's legacy will be a lasting one. The human tiger problem must be resolved because the repercussions are huge for people and tigers. If people can find a way of minimizing conflict, then the Bengal tiger might be seen as the region's greatest asset, rather than its most terrifying threat. And the Sundarbans will remain a last great refuge for the tiger.